Hey everyone, it's Julie. And today I wanted to do a part two on my oat test or organic acids test, which was basically to test whether or not I have oxalate issues. Now, this is not Orin, by the way, this is lemonade. It's fresh lemons with some honey and some water. It's really, really good. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about my test. So uh, I thought it was interesting the way Susan broke it down because she had to basically reevaluate all my lab values. And I guess the way the labs are doing it right now is not really accurate or she saw it as when she plotted it as a logarithm, as opposed to just the values that are on the lab, she can get nice bell curves. And a bell curve is what you're looking for when you're looking for lab data, because it, it kind of lets you know that you're on the right track with your data, that it's kind of following, every population follows kind of this bell curve. So if it's following this bell curve, you know, you, you know you're on the right track. So she found that when she was doing a logarithm as opposed to just, taking the values of the test as is, she got more accurate results. I was high in some of the markers for oxalate and basically you can't tell from an oat test whether or not you're really high in oxalate unless you happen to catch yourself during a big oxalate dump or something like that. The oat test is really going to reflect what you're eating and right now and for the last month or so but even for the last year i lowered our oxalates a long time ago and recently i lowered them again so basically what the test is reflecting is what i'm eating so that's not really going to be helpful susan kind of likened it to stopping people on the way to gro to the grocery store to find out what's in their fridge that's what a, most blood tests are like because what's carried around in your blood or in my case urine is not what's going to be in your fridge, which is your stores, right? So the test really does not show what's in your stores, but there are other markers that you can look at. And she said two of the markers that I have that are high are indications of oxidative stress and oxalate definitely causes oxidative stress in the body. Now it could, of course, I guess be something else, but these markers do tend to be associated with oxalate. She said that what my test looked like was I was deficient in thiamine and biotin. She basically thinks that the bacteria in our bodies um, make a lot of the nutrients that for our body and therefore if you're destroying the bacteria, you're, you may be nutrient deficient. Because the bacteria use, and she says this as well, the bacteria use thiamine to detox ox oxalates I think that's just another indication that my body is working really hard to get rid of oxalates right now. And it doesn't hurt to try to fix the bacteria in your, I love when people say bacteria in your gut because I really just wanna say bacteria in your butt because that's where it is. And the bacteria are really the only things that can take the oxalate out of your body. They're the only ones who can break it down. You need that bacteria. The bacteria is very important. I believe it could very well be because I was on a thiamine deficient diet for 11 years and a biotin deficient diet. So um, I was looking online, the biggest sources of thiamine is pork chops. And I haven't actually been focusing on pork because I know Paul Saladino talks about pig being high in linoleic acid. And so I kind of steered away from pork and I really kind of prefer beef but pork does happen to be a really great source of thiamine. So I'm going to start doing like the leaner cuts of pork. That way you're not getting as much of the omega-6. If I could find pasture pork, that would be great. We'll look into it. But a very high source of biotin is chicken liver. So it's like 400% your daily value. So I'm definitely gonna be eating chicken liver and uh, pork and see if that helps my bacteria get rid of some of this oxalate. She did say that my fatty acid profile actually looks really good, which I'm really happy about. I told her I'm, I've been eating my fats, I've been eating my meats, and she said, well, that's good, you're doing something right, because she would have expected to me to, me to be low in sulfur. So thank you, eggs, <laughs> and thank you, meat. 
and it's helping me in that regard keeping my fatty acid profile good so that's a positive positive. and then another thing she mentioned is that there was a marker that could be biotin related so that's why she also thought i was biotin deficient but it can also be a marker of b12 deficiency and so really in my case i feel as though it could be either of those was I absorbing the B12? I was taking a sublingual B12. Now sublingual can help because if you can absorb it under your tongue, then you bypass the gas, the gastrointestinal tract, and then you actually, it goes straight in your blood as opposed to having to use intrinsic factor. So that is one good thing that I was doing as a vegan. Uh, hopefully I was absorbing my B12, but again, I think this could be a possibility for me. The reason I think that it is oxalates is because I have a lot of symptoms that seem to point towards oxalates. I have issues with my kidneys. When I drink this water, it's called Fiyugi water, and I talked about, about it in my other video, but every time I drink Fiyugi water, I get pain in the back of my kidney, and then every time I stop drinking it, the pain starts goes away and i usually just drink fugi water like in the morning because i don't want it to like i don't know mess with what i'm eating during the day yeah so usually i get kidney pain kind of in the morning and then it goes away so that to me is just an indication that i am dealing with oxalates and you know oxalates can ruin your excretory system make you super constipated make you have digestive issues and i definitely do have issues with like digestion so yeah that's not great and then another thing is for the ladies men just no i'm kidding you're mature you can handle this it can make your periods worse so you'll kind of you might notice kind of oxalate issues around your time of the month so i've noticed that since lowering my oxalates again now like we're pretty low now uh, my periods have gotten substantially better and they were getting really bad at one point so yeah that's just another good sign that i think we're on the right track i don't know if you guys remember but a long time ago i made a video about my son being more constipated we thought he was withholding because he was potty training but i wonder if he doesn't have some oxalate issues because he was constipated he's not anymore ever since i changed his diet again so that's another just really good sign uh, issues in kids can involve like the urinary tract so for instance they might be wetting the bed they might be complaining of pain in that area and my son was complaining and still does complain about pain in that area so that's another reason i just keep thinking oxalates and oh here's the kicker i believe one of my dumping symptoms when i'm getting rid of oxalates is headache because whenever i and nausea so whenever i drink the fugi water i kind of get a bit nauseous and then around my period i get a bit nauseous and get a headache like pretty much clockwork and i've discovered that what gets rid of my headache like gets rid of it that day like it's not like tylenol where it happens you know within an hour but it definitely helps the nausea right away and within i would say four or five hours my headache's gone which is rare usually i have to wait it out like i don't like taking tylenol so i wait it out and i try to just go to sleep and then the next day it'll be fine but cheese every time i have a headache cheese milk yogurt all that stuff every time i have a headache i just start eating dairy like just the rest of the day is like dairy and my headache goes away which again leads me to oxalates because calcium oxalates is very attracted to calcium it really likes to bind up with calcium so by putting those dairy products into your body then if there's anything in your gut or excretory system like it's going to help bind up that oxalate as well so that's cool I'm happy with that. So that's just kind of where I'm at right now. I'm gonna to talk to my doctor about kind of next steps that she would suggest, but I'm also just gonna focus on diet, um, maybe improving my microbiome. I don't know how well that's gonna work because here's what Susan said, and it was really, really interesting. She said that basically we know about 15% of the microbiome.
we've only been able to study about 15%. And that's because a lot of the microbiome is anaerobic. And so you can't take it out and study it in the air, right? So we've only managed to study a small portion of the microbiome. And how do you get an anaerobic bacteria back into a body, right? So that's going to be a very complicated thing. Hopefully in the future, they'll find ways to do that. But mothers pass on their microbiome to their kids through breast milk, which doesn't require oxygen, right? She was telling me this and I, I was kind of blown away by that. The human body is so amazing how it, how it does things like that. So I don't know, maybe I should get into breast milk and maybe milk, you know, maybe raw milk has some flora, who knows? All right, so that's my journey. Just focus on high thiamine foods, high biotin foods, and I'll keep you guys updated if I figure anything else out. Let me know if you have any cool things to share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.